everybody, Mr. Martini here doing another read aloud. Today we're looking at the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists found in Chapter 4 of your online textbook. Remember that as we go through here, I might pause every so often to add some context, add some context or ask questions to further or deepen our understanding. As I've mentioned before, don't ever skip by these pictures, okay? Let's see what's going on here. We got an angry mob for sure. I don't know, they got guns, they got flags, and they got two people standing at the door. Federalist Alexander Hamilton, shown here with his arms outstretched. So here's Alexander Hamilton. Uh, he's outside of the King's College. Now, he favored ratification of the Constitution. Ratification is a word that they're going to use here. Essentially, that just means agree to pass. Okay, so to ratify something means to agree to pass it. Um, it's important to understand that at this point, when we're looking in history, okay, we've done the Articles of Confederation. The founders of the country um, have realized, you know what, this is kind of garbage. Um, they initially meet to revise them but eventually realized this is just unsalvageable. You can't fix the Articles of Confederation. We need to get rid of them and get something new. And that new thing is what we call today our Constitution, okay? So the framers get together, they write this new Constitution, this new set of laws and rules for the government of the United States. And now after they've written it, they need all the states or, or, or they need a majority of the states to agree to this new structure. That's where we are today. All right. The framers of the Constitution sent the document to Congress along with a letter from George Washington. Washington warmly approved the document predicting that the Constitution would promote the lasting welfare of that country so dear to us all. The framers had set up a process for the states to approve, okay, or ratify. So ratify, approve, okay, the new government. The Constitution would go into effect when at least nine of the 13 states had ratified it. In 1787 and 1788, voters in each state elected delegates, representatives, to special state conventions. These delegates would decide whether or not to ratify the Constitution. And here we have our first big change compared to the Articles of Confederation. In the Articles of Confederation, decisions had to be unanimous. All 13 states had to agree. For any of you that live in big households, um, you know that unanimous decision making is really hard. Even if you're like ordering a pizza and you can barely get five people to agree on the toppings of a pizza, right? Some people want sausage, some people want pepperoni, some people want onions, some people want mushrooms. Like there's all these different opinions. And to wait for a unanimous decision is super, super hard. So one of the first things they say is, you know what, rather than everybody agreeing, we just need what's called a super majority. Nine out of 13, okay? If nine out of 13 say yes, then it is taken on by the entire country. All right, for ratification. So the arguments of the Federalists. Here's the tie-in. Federalists want the Constitution, okay? The Federalists are for ratification. And you can kind of see it in their name. Federalists want a federal government or a stronger federal government. Um, here we go. The arguments of the Federalists in every state heated debates took place. Supporters of the Constitution called themselves Federalists because they favored a strong federal or national government. Same thing, federal and national, same thing. They call people who opposed the Constitution anti-Federalists, and we'll hear from them in a little bit. 
Federalists argued that the Articles of Confederation left too much power with the individual states. This imbalance produced a dangerously weak central government. Disputes among the states, Federalists said, made it too difficult for the government to function. So here, proponents, okay, people that thought the, that the Constitution was good, they are pointing out a flaw with the Articles of Confederation that this new government will fix. And that flaw was that there was too much power given to the states and not enough power for the federal government. And we talked about that a little bit when we discussed the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. Confederation. Federalists believed that the Constitution gave the national government the authority it needed to function effectively. At the same time, they said, the Constitution still protected the rights and powers of the individual states. Balancing, we're always balancing. How strong should a state be? And how strong should the national government be? Okay, what is that balance of power? That's what we're trying to figure out. Federalist, James, Federalists, James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and John Jay wrote a series of essays known as the Federalist Papers. Their purpose was to explain and defend the Constitution. They used pen names, but most people knew who they were. A pen name is like a, a nickname or a, a, a fake name that you use in case you don't want people knowing that it's you writing it. Uh, da, 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 da. These pen names are low. Today, the Federalist Papers remain among the best discussions of the political theory behind the American system of government. So when you're looking at how did we end up with what we have, the Federalist Papers kind of lay that out, like here's why we need a stronger national government, here's why we need to take some power away from the states. Courts still refer to the Federalist Papers in making decisions about the principles and role of government. In this way, they have had a lasting influence on the U.S. system of government. So this is uh, an image of the front page of the Federalist Collection. Remember that this, these were written by individuals, but then eventually they were kind of compiled into one book or one booklet. All right. So those were all people that wanted the new constitution. Now we're going to look at the people that were anti-federalists against the ratification or against adopting the constitution. Anti-federalists felt that the constitution made the national government too strong and left the states too weak. They also thought that the constitution gave the president too much power. Patrick Henry of Virginia protested, This Constitution is said to have beautiful features, but they appear to me horribly frightful. Your president may become king. If your American chief be a man of ambition and abilities, how easy is it for him to render himself absolute? What he's arguing here, or what he's fearing, is that under this new Constitution, there doesn't seem to be enough limits on the power of the president. And so he is very concerned that a president could one day become just as tyrannical as a king, and they just got done fighting off a king. Most people expected George Washington to be elected president. Anti-federalists admired Washington, but they warned that future presidents might lack Washington's honor and skill. For this reason, they said, the office should not be too powerful. So they want to weaken the original, the, the, the framing of the presidency. Okay, so that's, that's their big worry here is, am I going to have enough power still for the states? Again, that balancing act. Um, and then if we look here, Patrick Henry's declaration, give me liberty or give me death was both a cry for freedom from Britain and a statement of his anti-federalist views. So he was a man, I think this would be Patrick Henry right here, he looks like he's declaring. Um, he's a guy that is like, whoa, we just fought off a really strong government, 
do we want to create another really strong government that could do the same things? I don't know. This is that balancing act, right? Federalist versus anti-federalist. They kind of have to come together, as we'll see later, they have to come together and try and figure out a compromise, a way of working on this as one. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, have fun. I'm here for you if you need me. All right. Thanks.